What's happened? Nothing, luckily. Well, the police haven't caught up with your dad, if that's what you mean. That's what I came to tell you. I had a visit from two coppers at Crackadon. I think they thought they might find Jim. Anyway, he seems to be safe where he is for the time being. Oh, well, good. <clears throat> no, I didn't think you'd be pleased. You want to see him back inside. Where is he now? Do you know, I think it's best I don't tell you. What do you mean? Well, we don't want the police getting another tip off, do we? Well, you and me don't. But she does. Oh, come on, Mum. She tipped him off about Fred Elliott's caravan. Who else knew but us and Bet? Nobody. You know, that is just rubbish. I never said anything to anybody. I don't believe you. You've made it dead obvious you want him back inside. I do. I admit that. Because I don't want Steve mixed up in it. I don't want him sent to prison for helping his dad. So, yeah. Soon please catch up with him. Happy I'll be. See? Yeah, but I, I wouldn't stop him to the police. Look, Mum, I know Karen. I trust her. You married her? You have to? I don't. Cab! Wait a minute. Well, it's open up. We're dead in a bit. Okay, mate. What's up? Tommy's been sleeping on our settee for over a week now. It was only supposed to be for a couple of nights. What can I do, Sal? Is a mate? Yeah, I know that. And I feel sorry for him just the same as you do, but he can't bed down in our living room forever, can he? You've got to tell him he's got to find some more of his own. Eat that breakfast and get off to school. I'm not hungry. Craig, that cost me good money, so get it eaten. Right, I'm going to be late now, so I'll have my wages docked. There'll be less money to feed you and keep this house going. If my dad was still here, he'd be all right for money. Get Willie Dad in here, and I'm not all right for money, so stop arguing with me and get off to school. I feel ill. I'm going to have to stop at home. Oh, don't come that. You're just being awkward. Buck yourself up. I've got enough of my plate without you sulking and whinging. I miss my dad. I know. And it's not you he's fallen out with, it's me. Yeah, well, it doesn't make much of a difference, does it? He's not here whoever he fell out with. <sighs> not open yet, Squire. <coughs> oh, it's you. It's my mother I want. She's not working today. Her pal's getting married. She's upstairs giving her two lots of undercoat and a layer of gloss. Right, well, I'll just go up and... Uh... Your old man's still on the trot, I gather. Can't last, you know. He ought to give himself up. Save everybody a lot of aggravation, especially Liz. It's you that's caused all the aggravation in the first place. You what? Why do you think he ran from prison, eh? Because he heard you were after me mum. Pestering her. Try to get her into your bed. See ya. He's in trouble now. Because of you. I can understand you sticking up for your old man. You're his son, you would do. But let's face it. He's always been bad news. What's your mother had out of marriage to him? A load of grief and the occasional good hiding. You know nothing. You only hate him because she won't go for you. You just want him out of the way, don't you, see? I bet it was you that tipped off the police about the caravan, wasn't it? Steve! Hey! What's going on? You want to know who shot me dad to the police? Or what about him? He had good enough reason. He didn't even know where he was because I didn't tell him. I tried to keep it in the family. You just don't want to accept that it were Karen. Now, please, cut the argy-bargy. We've had enough already. No hard feelings. Well, not on my part, anyway. I'll leave you to it. I know you don't like him, but Laurie's all right. And none of this mess is his fault. Yeah, it's not Karen's either. I don't want to fall out with you. Right. Now listen, I'm going to tell you where your dad is. Because he needs food and drink taken to him. Is it true what Jelly says? That what you really want is a wedding with all the trimmings and a big reception? What I want and what we can have. Two different things. Maybe. And maybe not. How about this? How about we postpone the wedding? Postpone it? Just listen to me, all right? We postpone the wedding and we save up. It might take us a year or two. But then we can have the wedding that you really want. Kieran, that's really sweet of you. It's not money that's the problem. It's my family. I really want them to be here on the day and be happy for me and for you too. But there's just no way. Well, you look, you don't know that till you ask them. Yeah, I do. If I'd done what they wanted, I'd been married years ago. But I wouldn't. 
And they'll never forgive me for that. Come on. You've got me. Listen, we've got me. We've got each other. That's what counts, right? Yeah. Right? Huh? <laughs> What if a customer comes in? Well, whoever it is, I'm sold. They can't afford me. <laughs> there. How's that? Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks, kid. Hey, do you want your toenails doing as well? Yeah, why not? Hang on. Would I be spoiling Cecil? Why not? Gives the old lad the full Monty. <laughs> ah, you're right. I'll tell you what. Let's have a drink first. I could do with one. OK. Hey, not feeling jittery, are you? Not jittery exactly. It's a big step, though, isn't it, getting wed? Am I making a fool of myself, Les? Come to that. Am I making a fool of Cecil? No good asking me or anybody else. It's only you can answer those questions. I've made a fool of myself over fellas a good few times in the past. Maybe that means I don't know how to pick a good one. I don't know. I look back and I can see most of the time I went for chances. Blokes who'd lie to you. I knew you knew would lie to you. But all the same they turned you on, do you know what I mean? Don't I just... I've learned one thing though. I've had enough of being hurt. Oh I to hell with that for a game of Skittles. Cecil won't hurt you. Not from what I've seen of him. No, he won't. I'm sure of that. He's a good man, is Cecil. And we'll have a good life together. He'll look after me. I know that. And I'll tell you something. I'm going to look after him. This time, Liz. This time. It's going to be all right. <laughs> oh, good. You got here on time. As soon as Fred gets here, we'll set off and get the bride. There's something you need to know. No brewery business today. Whatever it is, it can wait. This isn't brewery business and it can't wait. It's to do with your lady friend. What the hell's the matter with you? Can't you even call her by her name? It's Bet. And in an hour's time she'll be my wife and your stepmother. I've had a private detective following her. You've done what? What the no, hell? Hang on, she's been making a fool of you behind your back. She's got a boyfriend. But don't take my word for it. See for yourself. I did warn you. I told you you couldn't trust her. Who's the man? That I don't know. I tried to tell you. I mean, I could see what she was, but you wouldn't listen. No. I didn't want to. Look, I had to tell you. I, mean, I couldn't let you marry a scheming old tart, could I? No. No, of course you couldn't. You've had a lucky escape, hmm? Right, well, uh, might as well get down to the office. Plenty one seeing to. Right. Well, I'll love you and leave you. I have to get settled to church on time. Have you remembered the wedding ring? Ye oh, my word. Oh. Oh, thank you, Claire. Oh, I'd have been in disgrace if it hadn't been for you. <laughs> Expect me when you see me. Late, I should think. There'll be a good few champagne corks popping if I know Cecil. Ah, well, you get yourself going and enjoy yourself. I have every intention. Oh, yes. In order to compensate you young folk for leaving you to your own devices, I've arranged a treat for us all tomorrow. A boat trip. What do you think of that? I thought you'd like it. Ernie Roscoe's lending us his motorboat for the day. Oh, Cecil Newton's not the only one with these playthings, you know. Who's Ernie Roscoe? You know damn well Roscoe's pork products. Great big house at Lytham bought off proceeds of black puddings and pork scratchings. Oh, it'll be a grand day out. That sea earl does a load of good. Now see, Ashley. Will you stop chatting away? You'll have me late for a wedding. <laughs> yeah. Tell Deirdre what you was told me. Oh, it's nothing much. She only went into Manchester last night and picked a bloke up. Good for you, Ben. I did not pick him up. Actually, he picked me up. Oh. He's ever so nice. About my age. Maybe a bit younger. Oh, well, there's no harm in that. That's what I said. <laughs> and he's called John, short for Jonathan. Although he's not short, he's quite tall. He's good looking and he's dark haired and he's not short of money either. Never guess what he does for a living. He's an airline pilot. He what? What's his second name? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's not Lindsay. I told you I don't know. But he's 
dark, handsome, charming. His name's John, and uh, he reckons he's a pilot. Don't say it's him again. It's very late. He's not coming. Oh, now, give over. Maybe we've got the arrangements wrong. Maybe we're supposed to meet them at the church. No. He said him and Fred would pick us up here. He's not coming. Now, come on. Something's gone a bit wrong, that's all. Maybe the car's broken down or something. He'd have phoned. I can't just wait here. I'll phone him. No. It's humiliating enough without going chasing him. Matt, I'm sure it can't be like that. I am. I don't know why, but I am. I think I always knew. It was just too good to last. <laughs> Off. Oh, now, come on. <laughs> what are you talking about? Cecil? What's going on? It's our Philip. He's had bet followed. She's at it with some man. Here I am offering her a marriage, a good life, and she and her boyfriend are making a mug out of me. Well, it's my own fault. There's no fool like an old fool. See, I know he's your son, but I'd think twice, nay, ten times about taking for gospel out he tells you about Bet. He hates sir. I know he does. And I'm not taking any notice of anything he says, but it's true, Fred. I've seen the photographs. Bet. And this fella. What's she got to say about it? What can she say? I haven't bothered to ask her. You have not asked her? And I think it's about time you did. I believed he loved me. I trusted him. I believed everything he told me about his job, his, uh, his life, his money problems. Yeah, it wasn't just me he conned either. He conned the police, he conned a jury, and I carried the can. That's awful. Truth came out in the end. Damned side too late as far as I was concerned. And he went to jail for it. But he'd be out now. I'm looking for some other woman to manipulate. Yeah, but that's if he's him. You don't know if he's him. No, no, she's quite right. Listen, if you see him again... I'm having lunch with him tomorrow. I said I'd meet him in a wine bar in town. I told us that. Well, I'm telling you now. And I'm not going to stand him up on the off chance he's the one that Deirdre fell foul of. Oh, no, no, that'd be silly. I, I just think you ought to be careful, that's all, love. Because if it is John Lindsay, you're just the type of woman he'd go for, you know. Vulnerable. That's a funny age. I'm not at a funny age. Look, I, I tell you what, you meet him as planned, I'll follow you into the wine bar, I'll give him the once over, and if it's not John Lindsay, I'll give you the thumbs up and you can fill your boots. Do you fancy that fish and chip cafe? Yeah, why not? At least we've all got our chairs, so Josh will be all right. Excuse me, is this yours? Is this your baby's shoe? Yeah. Hey, please, thanks very much. Thanks. The dear these days, aren't they? Look at his shoes. Little lad, is it? He's the image of you, love. Just saying, you've got your mummy's looks, haven't you? Cecil, where have you been? We've been going frantic here. Bet is here. It's a bit awkward, is this? He weren't for coming. What's going on, Cecil? What's this all about? Found out about you. There's another man. Don't deny it. You've been seen with him. Another man? What do you mean? Your boyfriend. You'd have kept him on after we were married, no doubt. And I'd have been keeping him without even knowing it. There is no boyfriend, I swear it. Who's been telling you this? Don't you lie to me. What's this, then? It's not what you think. Oh, come on. Who is this man? I can't tell you that. 
But it's not how it looks. <sighs> Come on, Fred. I told you it was pointless. It's my husband. Liz, hang on. No. Bet won't tell you because she's trying to help me. His name's Jim MacDonald. He's escaped from prison. He's on the run from the police. My hell, it's Jim MacDonald, all right. I knew there were a man on the run. The bobbies thought you were riding in my caravan. He was in your caravan for one night. And then when you said you were going back, I had to get him out. And what is this man to you? Lizzie's husband, that's all. My friend's husband. He's on the run from jail. He can't face going back. And she asked for my help. And did she ask you to kiss him and all? The police were all over the place. I was trying to get him away. And then a police car came right by. I said, grab hold of me, Jim. Pretend we're on holiday. Give us a kiss. Make it look like that's all you've got on your mind. I believe you. Oh, I've been through the ringer this past hour. Can you understand? I was shattered to think. Don't ever put me through that again, will you? I won't. I won't. Now, hang on. What are we going to do? It's a serious offence, is this, Aidan and Abetting? I know he's your husband, Liz, but let's have it right. He's a criminal. I can't turn him in. Well, of course she can't. She's only human. Aye, but... Where is he now? Well, he's... Uh, London. He phoned me this morning. Where he goes from there, I don't know. It's out of my hands. Well, that's a relief. So you lads can have clear consciences. Aye. And so can you. Helping Liz, helping a friend, you did right. I'd have done the same. Well, come on. What have we stood here for? Let's get to that church. Beth and I want to get married. Good to see you, son. You all right? Mm. I'm hungry. Where's your mother? Uh, she's at Bet's wedding, that's why I'm here. I knew you'd be hungry. I got you cold stuff because I didn't know how you'd be fixed for cooking. Oh, is that there a pie? There's uh, bread, milk, there's uh, chicken there. <laughs> and uh, we would like the old whiskey. Well, son, you're back in the will. God bless you. Not that you were ever out of the will, of course. And having said that, not that I've got that much to leave you. Here, let's have a toast to bet in our wedding, eh? Slanger. Ah, oh, I'll tell you what, she's a good girl. Saved my bacon last night. If it wasn't for her, I'd be back behind bars by now. Uh, listen, talking about going behind bars, we've got to get you out of here somewhere safe. And I'll tell you what, I've an idea how we can do it and all. Where's your pals today? They haven't got any. Don't give me that, you've got loads of mates. You're better off with them than hanging around here in your dinner time. I just wanted to see if you were here. I'm not going anywhere, Craig. I'm always going to be around for you. OK. OK. You better make tracks back to school. Me and Kev are going for a pint of pint. I might see you later. Yeah. See right, you. I worry about that lad. He seems to think I'm going to vanish. That's why it's handy for me to be over the road at your place. Yeah, well, it can't be comfy. Keep him on my ass, I see, can it? Well, it does me, mate. You and Sally have been really good pals to me, letting me keep down over there. She does know how grateful I am to her, doesn't she? Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course she does. Uh, <coughs> oh, Arthur. Sorry we're a bit late. You're over an hour late, Cecil. Well, I know, but you know, things happen. You know how it is. I'd like you to meet my bride, Bet. This is Arthur, an old pal of mine. <laughs> I'm delighted to meet you. It's high time someone took Cecil in hand, and... Likewise. <laughs> oh, this is Liz and Fred, our witnesses. Hello. How do? Right, Arthur, ready when you are. Well, I, I, I'm sorry, it's not possible. Oh, co come on, I, I, I mean, I know we've messed you about a bit. Uh, I can't do it. Uh, um, uh, I just had a call. One of my parishioners on his deathbed by the sounds of it. Oh, but Arthur... 12 o'clock tomorrow, that's the best I can do. It's my only window. Well, that'll have to do, then. It's fine by me. Oh, it's all my fault. Give over. All right, then. Twelve o'clock tomorrow. Fine. See you, then. Bye. I booked a table at the Wellington. 
wedding lunch, champers, all the trimmings, even the wedding cake. Are we going to let it go to waste? Are we hellers like? Come on! About time, where have you been? Been stuck in here on me, on. I've been sorting my dad out with supplies. Sorry, it never occurred to me you might want to come and help. No, I don't. And I don't want you anywhere near him either. Steve, eventually the police will catch him if you're involved with Karen, him. I have to be involved. It's me dad. Now listen, he's, uh, he's on a boat in the marina down the coast. Come tomorrow, I'm going to take him out to sea. I'm going to take him over to Northern Ireland. What? Steve! Karen, he's got friends over there, pals that'll look after him. Take him to America if he wants. Have you gone mad? You're not going to get away with that. Karen, it's the only chance he's got. You're going to get caught? And then you will end up in prison just like your dad. Who knows? If you ask nicely, might let you share a cell with him, eh? Steve, I am begging you, don't do this. I've got to, Karen. Well, then I'm telling you, and I do mean this. If you go to prison, I'm not going to wait for you like stupid mum waits for Jim. Because when you come out, I'm not going to be around. Stay with us here, because next, it's the bill. And then at nine... Really sorry, Miss Dealey. No, it's OK. I but didn't know it was Donny Osmond. Yeah, but where's my dressing room, then? This must be the one. <laughs> Join Cat Dealey for the Royal Variety Performance. All the biggest names under one roof.